in the name of Jesus. Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God bless you.
take you to a word tonight that I believe is so needed for every, every one of us because some of you here, and I want to say not just some of you, but a lot of you here, carry so much insecurity, so much of, you know, I just, I'm nothing, I just can't do it. And, and we go on and on, and some of us just keep going in and out of failing and falling. We can't do that. Look at your neighbor and say, we can't do that. Yeah. Say it with me, the devil is a liar. Yeah. See, when, when Jesus came to live inside of you, imagine, it was not just anybody. It was God Almighty that lives inside of your heart. And we act like, like the world has more power, like depression and, and discouragement and all the other stuff has more power than God. That's not the truth. The devil, listen to me, you got to get this in your mind. The devil only has the power you give him. If you don't give it to him, he don't have it. Almighty God, el Dios Todopoderoso, vive adentro de nosotros. God Almighty lives inside of you. Not just any God, but God Almighty, the creator of all that exists lives in your life and the devil through trials and problems and circumstances and you name it you keep going he tries to make you believe that you just can't make it but I'm here to tell you you can make it and you will make it you will make it look at your neighbor and tell him I will make it Hallelujah. I want you to go with me to the book of Acts, chapter 2. And we're going to read from verse 15 down. Because this is the church today. This is what the church should be like today. Is, are, you, are you with me tonight? The church should be flourishing and mighty, powerful. Listen, you should be, you, listen, you should be just crying over your problems. You ought to be defeating the devil. Is there anybody here? You ought to be telling the devil to take a hike. You're, you're going to get up in the name of Jesus Christ. Give him praise. Look what it says. For these men are not drunk. Can you imagine they had just gotten baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost? And, and the people in town were mocking them and, and, and saying these, that they were drunk and, and so forth. And look what he says. For these men are not drunk as you imagine. They're confronting the issue as you imagine. For it is only the third hour about 9 o'clock a.m. So imagine this. It's 9 o'clock a.m. So somewhere in the early morning, the power of the Holy Ghost invaded the upper room and 120 individuals were filled with the Holy Ghost. 
Is there anybody here with me? I said, is there anybody here with me? See, look, look over here. We mistake a lot of things for the Holy Ghost. Sometimes the pastors will pray for you up here or somebody and you'll fall down and you'll go all over and all kinds of stuff and we think, okay, I'm baptized. No, 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 no. The evidence of someone that's really baptized is the person who speaks in another language, listen to me, given to you by the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody with me? And it transforms you from the inside out. It empowers you. Say it with me. It empowers me from the inside out to be able to defeat the devil in everyday life and beyond that. Come on. Do you believe that tonight? Otherwise the Bible, otherwise the Bible ain't true. No, if you believe it, give him a big praise. So look what he says. Let's go on. But instead, he says, this is the beginning of, say it with me, this is the beginning of what's going to happen. Say it with me, of what's going to happen before the rapture. Brother, we're in the verge of the greatest revival the world has ever known. Listen to me. Listen, look over here at me. Sometimes people call revival just falling on the floor and shaking and all that. And I, and I believe in all that. I believe in all that. That's fine. But real revival brings the lost to Christ. Yep, give him praise. So if, if you have revival in you, then you should be bringing the lost where? Oh, no, 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 no. You think the pastor is supposed to do it. You have the revival in you, and the devil has you so, so sidetracked, believing you can't do it. Say this with me. The devil, the devil is, is a, liar. a liar. I can do, I can do anything. anything. Amen. Through Christ. Who gives me the strength? Can you understand that? Can you give him praise? Now, now you can't listen to me. You gotta, you gotta understand this. You can't do what God wants you to do without prayer. What strengthens your spiritual life? What strengthens you in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit working together with you. If you don't pray, if you don't be begin to pray and talk to God and ask God to fill you and help you and use you, listen to me, you're going to be a person on the sidelines always begging for help. And Jesus did not save you to do that. He saved you to be mighty and powerful. Yes. Oh, give him praise. So, so, so remember that, that it's, it's important that you and I understand this. Look what he says here. But instead, this is the beginning of what was spoken through the prophet Joel. 
And it shall come to pass in the last days. Say it with me, in the last days. The last hours. We're in it. This is it. God declares that I will pour out of my spirit upon all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, telling forth divine counsels. Well, I think I'm reading that wrong. Look, look what he says. Look what he says. God declares that I will pour out of my spirit upon all mankind and your sons and daughters shall, 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 shall be down and out, be all messed up, always, always, uh, you know, down because the devil don't leave them alone and always running after them and, and they don't know what to do in, in life and, and, ah, uh, Look at what it says. I said, look at what it says. I'm telling you, I was going to prison. I was a new convert. I had my pockets full of tracks. I couldn't drive. They wouldn't let me. I'd go downtown, Brother Steve, all over. And I, everybody I saw, I gave them a track, man. I started talking to them about Jesus. Amen. Did I have problems? I had a lot of problems. I was fighting a custody case for my daughter at the same time. And they told me it was impossible for me to get my daughter because of the problems I had going already. Could you imagine? And I'm fighting for this. But I'm out there on the street, passing tracks, talking to everybody, winning people to Jesus, Amen. bringing them to the church. doing Oh yeah, give him praise. <laughs> I, I could have sat down and said, hey, I just can't do it. Nobody knows what I'm going through. This is so much. I can't handle it no more. And the Lord's looking at you and saying, well, who in the world do you have living in you? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who, who lives in you? Can vive adentro de usted? El Dios Todopoderoso. God Almighty lives inside of you. Oh, you're not hearing me. You know, you know what I did? I, for two and a half years, Brother Steve, I was fighting this case on, on, a, on an appeal. And... Uh, with the appellate courts, I was fighting this thing. For two and a half years, every day, three times a day, I would be at the church, and you know what I would be doing? Crying, oh Lord, I don't think I can make it, Lord. I would be there praying, getting closer to God. There were people around the whole neighborhood, I would be in there praying, and the Lord would speak to me and say, go pray for so-and-so. They weren't even Christians. They were just neighbors. And I'd go over there and I'd pray for them because they were, they were sick or they were dying or whatever. And the Lord would heal them. Amen. One time I was at this guy's house. He had a big six or seven foot fence, and I was on this side of the fence, kneeling down, talking to the owner of the house. I was talking to him about the Lord. And this car drives in, and the guy asked for me. So I got up and went over there, and I knew the guy from, from, from my job. And he tells me, are you still going to that church? I was right across the street from the church. I said, yeah, I go right there, I says. And he says, I was on my way, he said, to kill myself. And I heard a voice that told me to come over here to this driveway that I would find you here. Hey, we brought his whole family to Jesus. 
Oh, you better lift up the mighty name of Jesus. And, and brother, I had some problems. I was fighting these court cases. All right. Brother, you got to make up your heart and mind. I'm not going to let the devil sidetrack me. Say it with me. He will not sidetrack me. I'm going to make it. I'm going to do what God says. All right. So look what he says here. And it shall come to pass in the last days, God declares that I will pour out of my spirit upon all mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. It doesn't say maybe. It says they will prophesy. They will prophesy. They shall prophesy. Look at this. Telling forth the divine counsels and your young men shall see visions, divinely granted appearances, and your old men shall dream dreams, divinely suggested dreams. I'm telling you, God, look, at, look over here at me. God is about to move and he wants to move through you. He's going to do things that the world can't even imagine. Come on. He, he uses he uses nothing to do something. Let's go on. Look what it says. Yes, and on my maid servants, men servants, also, and on my maid servants. In those days, I will pour out of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Hallelujah! That word prophesy means they're going to preach. They're going to tell, say whatever God has given to them. Amen. Telling forth the divine counsels and predicting future events pertaining especially to God's kingdom. And I want you to see this from this verse down. And I will show you wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and smoke and vapor. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the devious day of the Lord comes. That great and notable and conspicuous and renowned day. Listen to me. It's about to come. It's about to happen. And we can't be the same way we've been all this time. Letting every little problem take us down and, and get us in the, in the uh, I mean, we're, it looks like we're going to the dumps every time, every time a problem comes. You, you and I cannot allow the devil to do that to us anymore. No more. Say it. No more. It's over. We're going to do the will of God. Are you with me? So, so look at it. Look at this. Verse 20, 21. And it shall be that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, invoking, adoring, and worshiping the Lord Christ, shall be saved. Listen, you're about to see, we're about to see a move of God in the Colorado area. I know it's going to move all over America. But I live here in Colorado. And we're about to see God transform Colorado like he has never been transformed. Amen. We're about to see people be saved that you and I thought would never be saved. Amen. They're going to get saved. They're going to come. Come on. So write this down if you're writing anything down. I have to believe the promises of God. I've got to believe the promises of God. If we die before anything, your children will walk in those promises. Your family will be a part of them. Are you with me, church? Yes. Now, now I, wanna, I want you to see me. I want you to look over here at me. 
One of, the, one of the biggest problems we have, we're good listeners to the wrong thing. We're always listening to people who want to discourage us. They're not encouraging us, they're discouraging us. Are you with me? And all the Lord called you to do was to listen to his word. Hello. I said, hello. You're always going to find skeptics. Always. In church as well as out of church. You're going to find people who are always trying to discourage others, trying to keep them from flourishing in the Lord. And, and somebody asked me, do you think they know they're doing that? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't know if they know, but they're doing it. The enemy is using them. Because the devil knows, listen, he knows that you can be very powerful in the hands of a living God. Are you with me, church? So he's trying to keep you from getting there. And how does he do that? He gets you to listen to everything else all around you except the Lord. You, you will listen to everybody else except the Word of God. Is that a trip? We hear the Word and, and it's like it goes in one, one year and out the other and we're so busy and we got so many things going and I got to get going and I got to get doing this and, I gotta, and the Word of God just goes. But when we stand and talk to somebody, we give them all our attention. Oh, really? You mean I can't ever be anything for the Lord? And you believe it. It's the truth. You can be powerful, Hito. Don't let nobody tell you that, that you can't. How old are you? You know what? We've seen preachers, nine years, 12 years old, nine years old, preachers, big, they became big preachers. They started at your age. Is there anybody here with me tonight? How many want to defeat the devil? So, so look at this. Look at this. And it shall be that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, invoking, adoring, and worshiping the Lord Christ, shall be saved. The devil wants to stop you from bringing these people to Christ. People will be attracted, listen to, to this, not to you, not to who you are. And that's the biggest mistake most of us make, is that we think that they're attracted to me. Ah, oh, I'm so wonderful. And we're like that. I don't know what they call. Remember that? Mm, mm. What was it? Do you know, remember that dog? He thought he was so great. He flowed up in the air and then flowed back down. He was so conceited. It was, it was pitiful. But it's not you. It's the God that lives in you that's attractive. What a powerful God. I said, what a powerful God. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy. I want you to go with me. Because, because this is so very important for you and I. And you have got to make up your mind. What are you going to do? Whose side are you going to be on? What are you going to let God do for you and through you? You, you have got to ask yourself that. Nobody can answer that for you. You're the one that has to answer that to the Lord. Okay? So I want you to go with me to 1 Samuel. Or 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 6. Let's, let's read this, because this is, 
very powerful. Now you know that David, King David, was a powerful king. But King David also went through a lot of stuff. But look over here. But he never let the stuff stop him. Imagine while he was hiding in a cave, mientras que él se escondía en una cueva, él estaba al, 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 alzando, él estaba haciendo un ejército grandote. He was building a, a, an army, a force that was going to be his great men of God. They were going to be so powerful. He wasn't in there in the cave crying. He wasn't like the homeboys. Oh, here I am in the home. My sister-in-law had to cast out all those devils this morning. <laughs> Man, she stood in there for, she used to pray for you guys for an hour. I was ready to send reinforcements in there. I said, man, those guys need a lot of prayer. <laughs> the homegirls don't say nothing, man. Look at them. They're just sitting there all quiet so that, so that I won't look at them. My sister-in-law went over there. They all fell on the floor all at one time. <laughs> I was going to tell him, get up from there. <laughs> ah, Lord. God is good. Oh, what do you want to do for God? What do you want to become for the Lord? What kind of Christian do you, do you want to be? Do you want to be a defeated Christian? Or do you want to be a Christian that has power in God? What kind of a Christian do you want to be? If you let the world speak to you, the world will tear you down. If you let the, the Christian that's, that's mediocre, that has one foot in the world and one foot out, you'll never make it. Never. You, you've, got to, you've got to get in there with the Lord. Listen, listen, when I got saved, I got saved, Brother Steve, in the church. They didn't even want me there. Can you imagine the Lord saving me in the church and the church didn't want me? I said, wow, what a trip, man. They blew my mind, brother. These were Christians. I thought to myself, wow, man, I got treated better in the world than I did in the church. I didn't have anybody to go to. I didn't have nobody to go to with my problems and, and, and situations of what was happening and what I was going. I didn't have no, none of that. You know who I went to? Jesus. He was the only one I had. I'd go every day. I told you a whole go. I'd go every day, three times a day. I'd be there at that altar crying out to God. And the Lord took care of me. I said, the Lord took care of me. Amen. And he still does. He still does. What a powerful God we serve. Yes. Yes. And now there's a smile. I, I like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you with me? Okay, so go with me. Second Samuel 5, 6. Let me give you the story about this. The inside of this. There were many others before King David that tried to break through the Jebusite army. They had walls. They had everything. There were many others that tried to go and defeat them. And they never did it. Nunca, nunca pudieron conquistarlos. Trataron. They tried it. But they were never able to. And here comes David. 
A young man. He was a young man when he became king. And he sent them notice. And he told them, we're taking you down. He didn't say, I'm going to try. I hope we will. No, listen to me. You, want, you, you guys need to get out of the pity parties. Yes. Oh, hermana, just, just try, hermano. No, no te fijes. No, 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 no más trata de hacerlo poquito más. Poquito. You know. No, hombre. Hay que tirar al diablo para afuera, vámonos. Ah, lo voy a hacer. I'm going to do it. Yes. Say it with me. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. All right? The, the church has got to rise up. Yes. Yes. The body of Christ has to rise up. Yes. All right? We got to get up and say, no, we're not going to let the devil take us down. Yes. This is enough of it. Yes. All right? Praise the Lord. Yes. Okay? Yes. Look at this. Okay? Now, now imagine many armies before try to take the Jebusites down. And they never could. So here comes David. And he sends them notice. Look at this. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites. Now the Jebusites had control of Jerusalem. Are you with me? They controlled it. And no one was able to take them out of there. But here comes David. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who said to David, you shall not enter here. You cannot come in, David. You nor your men or nobody. You cannot come in here. How many know right now? Listen to me. You think the devil isn't saying to you, you cannot get your family saved. You will not come beyond that point. You're going to let your family die and go to hell with me. Is there anybody here with me that's hearing me? But I'm telling you today, you can't be like that. You can't just give up on your family, your friends. You can't give up on your city. Come on, we cannot give up. So look what, look what happens here. You shall not enter here, for the blind and the lame will prevent you. You know what he's saying to him? I don't even need, David... I don't even need my good army, my powerful army, to fight you. Just the lame and the blind will keep you out. You're too weak for us. What do you think? Look over here at me. Look over here. What do you think the devil says to you in your mind? You can't do it. You're too weak. You know how you are. You know how you do things. Come on, you know that. Say it with me, but devil. devil. No, 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 say it with, with faith. Devil, devil. You, will you will not take me down. I'm rising up, I'm rising up. in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I'm, getting up. I'm getting up. And I'm taking you down. Taking you down. And I am bringing my family in. I am bringing my friends in. I am reaching the city for him. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up that mighty name. What a powerful God. The devil tells you, you can't do it. You can't come in here. Is that a trip? Huh? Look at that. Look at verse 7. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is the city of David. What did he do? He took it. He says, oh, you're telling me I can't do it? Hey. Say it with me. Watch me, devil. Watch me. I'm going to bring my family to God. <laughs> oh, you better say it with, with faith. Come on, I'm going to bring my family to God. I'm going to bring them to the Lord. I want to bring my friends. Yeah, give him praise. 
now, now, now look at this. Who's, who's telling you? Look at this. God has given you permission. God has given you permission to go out there and bring them in. He's told you over and over, I've anointed you. I have anointing oil upon your life. He said, go out there and tell them. Go out there and bring them in. He's told you to call them in. Bring them in. Go, go haul them in in your car. Go haul them in any way you can. Bring them into the kingdom of God. Is there anybody here with me, church? You and I have got to get off the sideline. And we got to start doing what God has called us to do. What an awesome God. I told you, church, I had so many problems. Brother, I had more problems than the devil had. And yet, I didn't stop. Oh, no, I didn't stop. I went out there, bro. I, I said, I don't care. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach as many as I can for Jesus. And that's what I've done. That's what I've been doing. That's where I've been going. Brother, the devil hasn't been able to stop us. Come on. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Who lives in you? Jesus. No, who lives in you? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Who? Ah, give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. What a, what a powerful God. Now, now, now you got to hear this. You got to hear this because when, when I was looking into this, I thought to myself, wow, this is, this is heavy duty because the church, the church is only in two as long as things are going their way. And as long as they're playing the music they like. And as long as the preacher is exciting. And he has a big name. Brother, when Brother Chris came to give us that revival, remember? This place filled up every night, two weeks. As soon as he left, he took the revival with him, and those other people never came back. What, what are they, what are they, look at this, look, look you got to hear me. What are they looking for? Que... Están buscando. What are they looking for? It's not Jesus. Anybody can get touched and healed and fall out and, and all that stuff. Anybody can. But to be transformed, to be changed, Para ser transformados y cambiados es otra cosa. To be transformed and changed. And I'm not trying to downplay miraculous things. I, I, I love those things. I love to see those things. But, but listen to me. But if it doesn't bring change, then you're not going to make it. I want to make it. I said, I want to make it. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. See, see you've got to get to a place to where you tell yourself, you know what? Whether it's exciting or not, man, I go forward with Jesus. I walk with Jesus in the morning, at noon, at night. I walk with him all the time. And I'm not letting nothing detour me. I'm going forward. Praise the Lord. Now look at this. When David became king, he knew that God had promised 
more for Israel than the Jews had attained. He knew that God had promised more than what they had. Listen, you know what the problem with a lot of people in the church? They're satisfied with the way they are. Don't be satisfied. When you, when you become satisfied, you stop hungering for God. When you stop hungering for God, you're not going any further. You won't get no more. You have got to hunger for God and what he has for you. Are you with me, church? All right? So look, so look there. In particular was the fact that the Jebusites still occupied the area now known as Jerusalem. Now if David measured himself by the success of his predecessors, he never would have com contemplated an attack against the Jebusites. If, if he would have measured himself through all that he went through and all his failures and all his shortcomings, he have never went after it. Are you with me? Look, look at this, look at this. Can I use you, Brother Steve? Look at this. If Brother Steve would measure his life with Christ from his past, from, from, from being in prison all those years, from, from drug addiction, from all kinds of stuff, he'd never make it. The devil would keep him down. So he cannot measure himself by that stick. He's got to measure himself by the cross, the stick of the cross. Oh, you're not hearing me. That set him free. Come on, that set you free. Come on. That, that, that washes away your sins, your past, your everything. Praise God. None of us would make it. Are you with me? But look what it says here. Now, if David measured himself by the success of his predecessors, he never would have contemplated an attack against the Jebusites. The Jebusites were a fierce mountain people, and in spite of being on the list of nations to be dispossessed by Israel, they had never been conquered. Nobody had been able to conquer them. Look at this. Look over here. We're, the Lord is about to do what nobody else can do in this late hour. We're going to conquer the land for the Lord. We're going to conquer. Come on. The devil says you cannot do it. You will not do it. And I'm telling you here tonight, we will do it. Oh, you better give him praise. You better give him glory. Your family's coming in. Come on. Your family's coming in. Your loved ones are going to get saved. They're not going to stay out there wandering around. You're, the Lord is going to bring them in for you because of you. Are you with me, church? Now look at this. Think of it. Israel's greatest heroes from Joshua to the judges had tried to had tried and failed to conquer the Jebusites. They tried to conquer and always failed. Even Joshua. Ah. And if David would have looked at their failures and said, oh man, if they couldn't do it, I can't do it. No. No. We're going to do it. Yes. Say it with me. We're going to do it. In the name of Jesus. The Jebusites were contemptuous when they heard of David's plan to possess their chief city. 
Jebus was the name of that city. J-E-B-U-S. They probably have it up there somewhere. Amen. But, but look what he says. In, in Jebus, in, in parentheses, it was called Jerusalem. They mocked Israel. They mocked Israel. Listen, you're going to find a lot of people in this late hour is going to mock you. You, you ain't going to do nothing. Oh, watch, watch and see. Because it's not going to be us, it's going to be the Lord. They mocked Israel's young king, saying, you shall not come in here. You're not going to come in. You're not going to do it. You're not going to make it. But the blind and the lame will turn you away. He was mocking them. He was mocking them. Can you imagine, bro? That was heavy duty, man. Now look at this. There's two things you and I got to remember here. The first, for everyone desires to see the awesome promises of God fulfilled. How many desire to see God's promises fulfilled? So then God is saying to all of us, don't be conditioned. Some of you are conditioned to being down all the time. To not really going forward. This is just who I am. You know, I can't help it. I can't change. We're, we're always saying things like that. And that's not the truth. God is in the changing business. Anybody home? What a mighty God. The first thing is, he desires for everyone, everyone to be conditioned, not to be, con don't be conditioned by the past. So I was telling this young man today, don't be conditioned by the past. Don't let the past form your future. Yo le digo a todos, si tú miras al pasado, el pasado no está ahí. Es invencible, ya está muerto. It's dead. Why are you going to form yourself from the past? Well, I just can't make it, Pastor. I tried a lot of times and I just can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? Who said you can't do it? Who said you can't do it? Huh? The devil said you can't do it. The Jebusite said you can't do it. But David said, we're going to do it. Oh, you're not hearing me. We're going to do it. We're going to do what the devil says we can't do. We're going to do it. <laughs> Praise God, brother. What an awesome God. Remember that God can do anything. You serve a God of the impossible. Yes. Yes. The second thing you got to remember is this. It probably will not be the devil himself who comes out to defeat us. Rather, we must guard against the misguided advice of unbelieving Christians. Ah, oh, sister, just be happy that you're there jumping. Don't worry about anything else. Don't do nothing more, you know. You know, they don't want you to be anything more than what God wants you to be. They want you to just stay down. But God wants you to be more than you are. Yeah, yeah give him praise. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Half-hearted Christians... Cold Christians. Now look at this. The Lord said, I'm going to spew them out of my mouth. They make me vomit. 
thank you for allowing us to come into your home today. I know that the Word of God blessed you richly, but I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to Him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Him, today would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time. Amen.